Okay, C treatment. Okay? What we're doing is we're putting beneficial microbes on the seed to help with producing nutrition for the plant and we're putting minerals on the seed to help with germination and microbe for microbes so to use. What we're doing is we're aiding the plants, the seeds ability to germinate and to grow. So this is, oh, let me back up here. Okay, these are pictures. Okay, Ed, do you want to explain what you did here? Because this is your critter. What I did, well, it, I took a treated seed with stamina on the one side on the control, and then I treated it with, with the bio, biology boost. In 72 hours, that's the difference. So, so you just lay so the moist towel over them? Yeah. And if I, you can't see it on the picture, but if you take it on a computer and look at it, the biology boost, it just glows. It, it, it just jumps out compared to the other side. They're dull. That's how much healthier they are. Yeah. Okay, this one, Marty, what we were talking about, this has the soil biology boost on it. Okay. This one, this one doesn't. It, they both have the toxic seed treatment on them. We just went over top of it here with our, with our soil biology boost. Okay. And in 72 hours, this is the germination rate of these versus the untreated. Okay. Same moisture, same environment, just covered with a towel. And they had, and they had, uh, they had seed treat. They both had seed treat. They had. Yeah, they both had. They both had poison on them. Okay. And, and then we just added ours over top, but what it did is it is the microbes and the minerals helped with seed germination. Sure. Okay. Ted at Elk Creek sent me this picture. Okay, this was his spring wheat. What's that? Oh, they both had poison to start with. Okay. We didn't. Ed didn't do one without poison. This was just treated seed, and this was from Bar E, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, it was from a different farm that they brought in the seed, and it says, oh, I'm just going to play with this and see what the difference is between, because theirs was already treated. Ed doesn't do this. I treated, I put biology on their seed. That already had the poison on it. You can see the pink is, is still there. I can take seed put them in towels without any trees or anything on and I can get it as good as this one. Good. Good. Okay, then let's grow it. Okay? Now if I put yours on, it'll probably be... It, it'll help more. Okay, because this is what Ted did at Elk Creek. Okay? He sent us these and this was the seed treated wheat. This is the seed that wasn't treated. And so Ed says, hey, or Ted says, you, you got to see this. You got to see this. I said, all right. So that's the picture from Ted. This is what we did in the Midwest on corn. And this is our seed treatment. And, and so this is, this is on conventional corn. This is not GMO corn. But this is what happens with the seed treatment. Look at the side that got treated. Look at the untreated side. Okay, they planted. Okay, everything here was planted at about 32, 33,000 population. This is what survived. 31,000 in plot one, 30 here, 32 here, 33 here, 29 here. This field, 253, 257, 270, average 254. The very same seed in a different location 22,000 survived, 27, 22, 25, 23. Average 24,000 plant survival rate, 217 bushel. This was done by Byron Seed in, in Indiana. Okay, they distribute into a lot of different states and they did this and they sent us these results. And so th these guys have bought a lot of seed treatment from us. This is some corn that we did down in Cache Valley, down in Utah. 
This one didn't get a seed treatment. This is in a dairy that's just really close to us. And this is the guy out here. He's not quite six feet tall. And this is the corn right in front. And it doesn't get any better as it goes back. This is the field a mile away that they treated with the seed treatment. And there he is. So if you're looking for a little bit of growth, that's it. This is the treated corn. This is the untreated corn. This is your root system. Okay, so you can start to compare the length of the ears, the pound of the stalk in the ear, the height. You can look at the ear length. You can look at the rows of kernels around each one. You can analyze it down and you say, this plant just had more stuff to grow with. That's all there was. Okay. This was a field that we did. I have some farms I work with in Nebraska. And so we did, we seed treated his alfalfa. Now I'll tell you, alfalfa is a bargain. When you go to plant alfalfa, if you don't seed treat it, you are crazy beyond crazy. Because your seed treatment is going to last you for about five to seven years. One treatment. This is less than a buck a year to treat your alfalfa. This guy is the only guy that I have ever had produce more than 10 ton of alfalfa in a year. <coughs> we put it right on the seed, Dave. When the seed goes down, we coat the seed and we plant that baby. Was it, was it treated? Alfalfa you can't buy on treated. Oh, it has the rhizobium on it. Okay, we, over, we, we treat it over top of that. Okay. With the zodobacter, the mycorrhizal. Huh? And you put it in row? We put it on the seed and he just planted it. So he actually took this seed into, oh, who was the big guys? He had a big, a big fertilizer company went in and treated it for him because he didn't have his own seed treating equipment. He put this on. And that stuff comes up so thick. What you <laughs> see is way more seedlings survive. This is how we get yield on this stuff. Is you don't want 60 or 70 percent end germination. It may germinate, but you don't want them to die. This stuff survived. And we produced over 10 ton of alfalfa off this field. And so, it, and, and I've had guys, dry land guys, in Idaho seed treat their alfalfa, and in an average year, their seed treatment field will produce a ton more alfalfa on dry land than their non-treated side. It costs them a buck a year for a ton. <laughs> That's okay. It, it, just, it just helps these plants do better. Dave? You <coughs> oh, we, we have a foliar. Okay, we have a foliar biology boost. Okay, now for this we haven't put the foliar on this because he cuts this crop every 25 to 28 days and we don't want to keep respraying it and so what we'll do is we'll put foliar minerals on here but once we treat the seed and we've got it in the soil it's staying there for years and so the cost instead of being seven or eight dollars an acre every year it's seven or eight dollars one time for half a dozen years so it's a buck a year you know, a buck a year for a, an extra half a ton or a ton or two ton of alfalfa. When they got a great year's rain on one of our dry farms up there, they produced two and a half more ton a year off of the seed treated side versus the dry, the non treated yeah, on alfalfa. Is supposed to get more cuttings? Yes, yeah. <laughs> Let's say you get the tons here, it, it helps up to seven, eight years. Let's say we put it on small grains, on wheat, barley. You plant it, okay, you got this year off. If you come back the next year, will it still be some of it there? Yeah, absolutely. Ed will tell you that his soils get better and better and better. They get softer. Even, even his dry land soils that we're not putting a lot of biology out on, how have they changed, Ed? They've changed quite a bit. You feel the sponge when you walk across. So if it, if it stays there, and you can expect better yield on top of that. It, it will help improve. 
you know, it, it takes a while to get this stuff out there. But yeah, we coat the seed, we get her up and we get her going. And, and, and in Alliance, most guys got three cuttings. When we started doing this, we went to four cuttings and in some years we got five cuttings. And the other thing is, is we've had fields go long enough now that normally when guys would take them out at five years, they're taking him out at seven and eight. This guy, his stand at seven years was out producing his second year stand when we started putting the biology to it and the minerals to it. After seven years, he took it out, he took this stand out at eight years old because we peaked at 9.4 or 9.6 tons. We didn't get to our 10 ton thing on the on the seventh year and it started coming down on the eighth year and he took it out. Then we put this one in and this is when we broke 10 ton a year, the second year it was in. We used to get, we used to get two, two good cuttings and this year I almost got four. The fourth one was about a foot high. Oh, no. And they'll last longer. Your, your, your hay stands will last longer. The, the only reason they go out like they do is because they run out of nutrition. Let's say you, uh, you can put it on range grass because it's there. The grass right. is there, but can you put something on there that'll bring that up and really grow it when the moisture's there? Yeah, you can, you can do some very inexpensive stuff. You have a foliar biology boost that we have a lot of the same microbes in there but what we don't do is we don't put the mycorrhizal in it and so it reduces the price down but we're putting the microbes on the leaf we can put them out with a lot of soluble trace minerals the 70 or 5 or 80 trace minerals that we solubilize and that'll kick the plant in going the other thing that you have to do on those established pastures is you have to spray the microbes in through compost tea, let them get down in the root systems and get them going. Getting microbes down in that root system is, you can either do it through a drip line, you can, you can spray them on and let them rain in. Has that been tested to where it, there's a benefit for it? Oh, huge, huge. We have, we have another division of our company that does nothing but lawns and grasses, landscaping, and the products that we use are <laughs> humates, soft rock phosphate, and compost tea. And we'll take lawns that have got bare spots in them, they won't grow, and we put the minerals on, we spray the microbes on, and they'll literally completely fill out and go flush. And everything just comes back when you put those 60, 70, 80 minerals back in the soil, you put the biology back on there, and it just starts to restructure everything. And that stuff isn't expensive. You can make your own compost tea, you can dissolve some of these minerals, you can put them out, and those lawns that we do, and we do some commercial properties that are pretty high-end stuff. We'll do, we'll do some of the churches, we'll do some of the uh, office buildings, and it's just absolutely astounding how fast those grasses will turn around. And you can also take some of the seed, treat it, and interseed, and it'll spread. Yeah. That's a really good way to rejuvenate something, is take your grass seeds, tr seed treat them, go through and interseed into your old stands. Then you put the biology in the roots, it spreads, it goes sideways, and you infect the whole field. Absolutely. Very inexpensive. Okay. What do we got? Yeah, George. Getting back to that uh, dry land of alpha, mm -hmm. I've never seen a stain on number two north as I have last year. I don't know what kind of a sea to use, but I wonder. You know, I think this would give it a heck of a boost. It helps everything we put it on. We, we haven't really found a plant that doesn't respond to it yet. Because these plants all need the microbes and the minerals to work off of. The seed treatment that we have has 12 different groups of microorganisms, has 75 minerals in it, and it's just kicking the plant in gear and getting things going. 
We have an, a liquid application, we have a dry application. And, and so whatever way you're set up, we can, we can help you get this stuff put on and, and do this. Better germination, better water efficiency, better fertilizer efficiency, plant strength, yield. And guess what? We are out of things to talk about.